In a previous video, we looked at how we can set up an Android emulator to use a Google Map. In this video, we're actually going to make a Google Map. To start with, we need to make a layout that contains just this fragment tag. So I'm going to copy this tag. I'm going to go into my application that we've been working with, and this is the same application we worked with on the previous video. I'm going to go to Layouts, right-click New, and say Android excuse me, Android XML file. Uh, I'm going to call it Map of Plants. Okay, At layout doesn't matter. We, we can just go ahead and choose Finish because what we're going to do is we're going to take the XML that it generates and simply replace it with the XML from my slide. We don't need to wrap this in a layout or anything. This can be a, let me control M so we can see this in high def. Uh, this can be just a a standalone XML file, uh, element name fragment. And one thing is, if it is the only tag in a layout, it has to have this XML and S attribute. I know sometimes I've done this and others have done it, uh, where you put a fragment inside of a layout, you get rid of the layout, and then you forget that uh, the root element of the Android application must have this uh, XML and S element. So we give it the ID map, and we say that the name is map fragment, and we leave the rest as it is. Control M and Control S, and remember this is map of plants. Okay, and it's upset with me. Let's figure out and see if this is something important. Uh, okay, one second, please. After just a bit of playing around, I was able to uh, get it to work by by uh, putting an XML tag on the top and just rearranging and doing a clean build. So all looks good. Next, what we want to do is we want to make a new activity that will connect with this layout. So I'm going to go to my UI package and I'm going to say new class and I'm going to call it map of plants. And the super class, we have to be careful here. Uh, for the super class, I'm going to say fragment activity which means we have to have the Android support library included in our project. I showed how to do that on the prior video. Right click on the project, uh, choose Android tools, and then add support library. So we choose OK and finish. OK, so map of plants extends fragment activity. What we need to do next is we need to associate the class map of plants with our fragment itself. And for this, we'll just use the uh, onCreate method. So I start typing onCRE, hold Control and Space, and that will uh, allow Eclipse to do an autocomplete. Let me Control M also so that we can look at this in high def. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a set content view. And again, Control Space will autocomplete. Save me a little bit of typing and a little bit of time. So set content view, uh, and it's, <laughs> as I say that at hourglasses. And now we'll say R dot layout, and then we'll use the layout that we just created, map of plants. So we associate these together. Okay, associate the layout. Okay, uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to make a method. I'm doing this very similar to how the tutorial works. So we're going to make a method called setup map if required. Okay, let me spell that correctly. Set up map if required. I'm going to call a method that I haven't yet created, and then I'll let Eclipse help me out. I'm going to hold. I'm going to put my cursor over that method. Hold Control One, which is the general help in Eclipse. Hit Enter, and that's going to create for me a method called Set up map if required. Now, what I need to do is I need to get a reference to a Google Map. So I'm going to create a variable Google Map Map. Now the trick is. We can't call the constructor directly on this. We can't do this. Google map map equals new map, uh, new Google map. That simply won't work because uh, that's just not how it works. What we have to do is we have to actually ask for the map from that fragment. Okay. So I save and in the setup map if required, I uh, get rid of that comment and then I'm going to say if the map is null, we need to get access to the map. Okay, what I can do here is I can call that fragment. Well, let me control shift O, organize imports, which will give us the Google map. What I can do here 
is I can call uh, the fragment. I can say get fragment manager, okay? And then I can say find fragment, control space, find fragment by ID. Now remember, when we made that map of plants, the ID that we gave it is map. So all we need to do here is pass in the ID uh, r dot id dot map and that will get a reference to our map on the fragment okay we have to do a little magic casting here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my mouse over find fragment by id hold control and press one and um we're going to say assign statement to new local variable Okay, there we go. But instead of being a fragment, we need this to be a more specific type. We need it to be a map fragment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this variable type fragment to map fragment. Okay, and then we're going to call the variable name map fragment with a lowercase n. Control Shift O to organize import so we can find the map fragment. And now it notices that the variable type on the left is a more specific subclass of the object type that's getting returned on the right. So we have to do a cast, a quick mouse over, and that will take care of the cast for us. Now from that, uh, actually let me change this comment. Get access to the fragment that contains the map. Now what we can do is we can say map fragment dot get map. Okay. And this is going to return a map object. We can restore it in our map variable. And now finally, after jumping through some hoops and going to our map fragment, uh, we have a map that we can access. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to say enable location on the map. We're going to say if map does not equal null, if we were able to get a map at this point, we're going to say uh, map that set my location enabled and then true. This will allow us to click the button on the upper right hand of the map that will take us to our location uh, wherever our location is. Okay, uh, and so we'll want to engage a few listeners and a few more things but first we want to just get some satisfaction that this does work for us. Now the trick is I'm calling this from an existing whoops, I'm calling this from an existing application I'm going to need to make a few changes here to make a menu activity for this. Menu is not directly related to maps, so if you already know how to do this, feel free to advance a few minutes in this lecture and, uh, and catch back up when we actually have the emulator running. I don't know how long this will take. My guess is probably about five minutes or so. So I'm going to go to Menu. I'm going to go to Search Plans uh, XML. I'm going to choose Add. Okay. And I'm going to say item. That's good. And as soon as this on hourglasses, I'm going to control M so we can look at this in high def. And for the ID, I'm going to say, uh, I will say ID and we'll just say MNU map. OK, title. I'll choose browse. And new string. Now we'll simply give it a title. We'll say map. That map's fine. Our string dot lbl map is fine. We want to keep it simple because it's going to go on the action bar across the top of our application. Okay, so we say map lbl map. Give it just a second to synchronize that, and then we'll choose OK. Okay, um, visible. That's fine. We'll leave it that like so. Whoops. No, 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 no. No, visible true is fine. Uh, what I wanted to do is show is action if room. That means if there's room, it's going to show this uh, across the top of our action bar. And I think everything else uh, looks pretty good. We have an ID, MNU map, and we have a title. Uh, that's good. So I'm going to choose save. I'm going to control M. And I'm going to remember what my very first action is that uh, our application will call up and as I recall it's going to call GPS a plant activity okay 
and we have an on create options menu and then we should have an on I'll control O to look at local methods oh. on create options menu well curiously okay on options items selected aha uh -huh, I have that in a super class activity uh, called plant places activity okay so I go to on options item selected let me control M so that we can look at this in high def again this is the method that will be called when we click a menu item so from here it's going to be pretty easy if item dot get item ID equal equal R dot ID dot MNU map so if the item clicked is our map menu then we simply want to start our map activity okay intent map uh, map of plants equals new intent this comma map of plants dot class okay start activity map of plants terminate with a semicolon and save now if we're going to invoke an activity like this through an intent we also need to register it with the Android manifest so I'm going to go to the Android manifest and once again control M so we can look at this in high def and then I'll click on the application tab okay the application tab I'm going to scroll down I'm going to choose add activity okay and then we're going to choose browse and we're going to say map of plants boom and save and we're all set there so what we want to test out now is I want to run this I want to make sure that my menu works and I want to make sure that it actually pulls up a map if so we'll know that we have most of our map stuff working uh, this might take just a moment so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start the debugger start the Android emulator I'm going to pause the recording in case it does take a few moments now the application has come up I can click on the action bar and I can click on map and this will take us into our map view and we're not doing anything special with the map just yet but take a look sure enough we have here our emulator and it is showing our image so what's next we can now go into our emulator and what we can do is we can because we made location enabled we can enter a longitude and a latitude I'll enter longitude of minus 84.5 and latitude of 39.4, which will put us roughly in greater Cincinnati. What's going to happen is I'm going to hit send. The device is going to receive this. And then the next time I click on this button, it's going to go to that latitude and longitude. And if my guesses are right, I should approximately be in greater Cincinnati. Uh, so I'll zoom out. I see what's very funny is is where it actually put me uh is on the west side of hamilton uh very close on uh, brookwood avenue which is um actually where i worked when i was in college so uh, it put me right at, uh, at a radio shack where i used to work but nonetheless here we are sure enough it's put us in greater cincinnati uh so with the my location enabled we can we can enter a gps location and it will take us right there um if I wanted to go to England uh, longitude let's do let's do latitude I'm gonna take a wild guess on this one I'm gonna go with latitude of 55 uh, longitude I'm gonna go for Huntingdon I'm gonna go for Huntingdon uh, Peterborough Cambridge that area I'm gonna go with minus 1 and 56 and hit send and again let's see how close I come based on just uh, intuition and it looks like it put me out in the North Sea so it looks like I'm off just a little bit from where I want to be. Uh, probably need to make that. Up, oh, yep, I ended up way up in Scotland. So uh, I'll tell you what I probably wanted was a latitude number. Probably my first guess was a bit better, 55, and send. And let's see if this puts me in uh, uh, Peterborough, Huntingdon, that area. Well, looks like we're a little bit closer. Maybe not spot on, but. Uh, we're a little bit closer to where I wanted to be. We should be on the east coast of the United Kingdom.
Yeah, like again, a little further north of where I wanted to be. I could probably knock it down a little bit to get into there, but you get the idea. You see what we're doing? We're sending in GPS and we are centering the map on that location. So uh, that takes us at the 15 minute mark, which is pretty good for this video. This is now the second video that discusses maps. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go to an online data source. We're going to grab GPS position of plants and then we're going to put markers on the map where those plants are. So I look forward to seeing you there. As always, please feel free to uh, add any comments to the video. Uh, I will, in the video, I will also put the uh, GitHub location where the source code is. Uh, thanks again for listening.